Hey, good morning. My name is Scott McCutcheon of Sovereign Studios. Welcome to episode 30 of my Yamaha Virago Cafe Racer project. Um, today's going to be pretty fun today. Uh, we're going to take care of something that um, uh, some of you have been, you know, telling me I should fix. And the more I kept looking at it, the more I wanted to fix it too. And uh, that is the tail lamp. So uh, if you go all the way back to one of my earlier videos, you'll see where we installed the, uh, the first LED tail lamp. Uh, and that one was from a, uh, I forget exactly, a 2000, 2006 CBR, Honda CBR. And it was this tail lamp. Um, and it works, it works great. I, I like the, uh, the idea that it's integrated, being that it has the turn signals actually integrated into the tail lamp. Um, so it does, you know, your, uh, your standard rear brake light, your actual switched brake light, and then it also does both turn signals all in one device. I really liked how clean that was um, and wanted to utilize this on my Virago. And you know, I mounted it up, I made a custom bracket for it, which was uh, this right here, you know, and I basically would just mount it to the subframe, um, or I think it was more like that, right? Just mounted it to the subframe and and uh, bolted the um, tail lamp on, and that worked. Uh, you know, it was going to work, but it didn't really flow very well with the bike. Uh, I'll see if I can put a picture up right here real quick. Um, otherwise, you can just roll back to any of my previous videos to see it. Um, but it didn't really flow very well with the bike. It made the lines look kind of weird. Uh, it stuck out underneath the seat a little bit too much. Um, so, you know, I, I, I dug around and I kept looking at other lights and stuff. And I see where a lot of people would get this like hoop LED kind of thing. It's basically just like an LED strip that they would put on the back of their subframe. But my subframe isn't a hoop at the end, you know, so that really wasn't going to work for me. And yeah, I probably could have mounted it around the seat somewhere, you know, because once the seat's there, it's more or less a hoop anyway. So I probably could have figured out something for that. Um, but I just didn't like it. I see a lot of people do that, and I'm just not into it, you know. And um, to me, like, you know... I mean, I guess it works, but it's just cheap, you know? You bought this thing on eBay for 15 bucks and you put it on there, and yeah, it works, but eh, you know, everybody does that, you know? And yeah, you know, okay, I bought a lot of parts on eBay, but, <laughs> you know, it's not really the point. Um, I just didn't, I just didn't like it. So I wanted to use like an actual integrated LED tail lamp, you know, one that came from another motorcycle that actually looks like a motorcycle tail lamp. Um, so after a bunch of searching and stuff, the one that I come up with that seemed to be the best was this. Um, and this is the tail lamp from a, uh, what model year is it? I think it's um, a 2008 maybe, Yamaha R6. It's definitely from an R6. I don't, I don't remember exactly what year it is, but you can find these all day long uh, in red or in clear or in smoked. You know, the, they make these integrated tail lamps for the for the R6 very commonly. So, um, you know, I, I bought this thing on eBay for 35 bucks from a company called uh, Clear Alternatives, you know, and uh, nothing special about it. But you'll see, you know, where it has, um, you know, obviously two mounting holes here uh, and then these tabs that keep it, it fitted in place while it's mounted inside the R6 subframe. Um, so modifying this really wasn't going to work. Uh, so what we, uh, decided to do instead, grab a light here. So what we decided to do instead was to make this bracket. Um, so if you come back to the light, you'll see first that when you slide this thing and fit it into the the R6 subframe, uh, this whole like piece would be kind of sort of covered in plastic. And I expect that it probably would be real similar to how my CBR tail lamp worked. Um, so you can see where I built this like custom LED strip down here, 
but then I also added in this tail lamp up here and how this just kind of this isn't really like mounted in there it's more just like fitted inside the uh, the rest of the plastic back piece here um, you know this back fairing so I assume that the R6 tail lamp kind of worked the same way and that this just fitted up in there and that these tabs kept it in place while these ones actually bolted in, right? And importantly, you can see here, and I've already scuffed them up a little bit, but you can see these, uh, you know, protrusions in the plastic here that sort of fitted into place. Um, so you would cram this up in there and you'd bolt it into place. So I kind of made this to mimic that. Um, and this is basically just a, uh, a piece of thin steel. I took this plate, it was much larger originally, chopped it up, bent it, molded it, you know, welded it in a few places, and built this, uh, built this bracket out of it. You'll see kind of how it has these slots here where you can cram the light in place. And then of course, this is where the bolt holes would go. And you'll see these notches here that go to fit those notches on the underside of this. So how this works, uh, you know, is basically it is almost just like the R6, but now it's a nice steel plate. You know, I welded in two screws so it can be mounted um, real easily. And then I, uh, the edges right around here, I wrapped in this vulcanized rubber uh, because this is where this steel plate contacts this plastic lamp housing and I wanted it to be able to reduce vibration but also eliminate uh, any of the damage that I've been doing you know fitting the uh, light in and out to design this bracket sort of scuffed it up you know in a couple places and I wanted to uh, make sure that I you know once it's installed that it's not getting destroyed by rubbing against this metal. So anywhere that the metal contacted, I hit with vulcanized rubber on the edges to help prevent that. So pretty good. Uh, and then yeah, the, these two bolts are, are welded in place, you know, so you, we don't have to worry about, you know, getting a wrench on the other end. And I got a, uh, a lock nut here and, uh, you know, a simple screw. And then we'll use this collection of nuts and bolts here to actually bolt these two in place. So how this works, uh, you're going to slide the wiring into the middle. You're going to push this into place there. And then you're just going to push down, uh, push down on the lamp until it fits itself into place here like that. Okay, once that's there, we'll go slide these in place. Make sure you have a washer on one end. We'll get a washer on the other. And for uh, this purpose, I'm using these uh, nylon lock nuts. You know, so there's a washer on both ends and a nylon lock nut holding it in place just to make sure it stays you know I don't want it backing out um, much like that we'll go ahead and uh, tighten these down off the bike and there we go once they're tightened down we now have this and this whole assembly can then be installed into the subframe so we'll just uh, take the nuts off here and the washers and you pretty much just slide it in place. And there you have it. So once the seat's installed that's what our new tail lamp looks like. Much better. You know? I think that's gonna be a much, uh, a much better design. It's 
especially once uh, these wires are tucked. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. I think uh, I think that turned out great. It looks a lot better. Much sharper. It's not uh, sticking out too far from the seat, unlike the previous version. It's a lot more subdued. Yeah, I uh, I'm super happy with how that turned out. Looks good. Okay, so even though we just got it installed, I decided to do one more uh, or add a couple extra parts to this video. Uh, the first thing I think we're going to take care of, something I, I, I started not to like as I was looking at it fully installed, was the gray backing for this. Um, because you end up being able to, uh, uh, once it's installed, you end up being able to kind of see, you know, this gray edge. Uh, and I think it throws off uh, the look a little bit. So we're going to mask all this up and paint it. We're going to paint it black. So that this is a black backing uh, and that way when you do see it it's just black um, so it shouldn't you know kind of throw your eye uh, while you're looking at it uh, while we do that we're also going to go ahead and get the connector onto the end of this and uh, see this wire a little bit better so that it's, it's better protected under, underneath the seat uh, since it's one of the more exposed wires uh, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. So let's uh, get started on that. So just to make note, this is actually the breather. Uh, and there's this little rubber boot that goes over that. You want to make sure you keep that. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to paint on it, so I'm just going to put it aside for now. Uh, in terms of the wiring, you can see I've already put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on this and bent it into place. Um, you know, so uh, that should help better protect it. I'm going to get one more piece uh, to kind of bring the heat shrink tubing up here. And we'll chop the connector right about here. Um, I think we can go ahead and cut each wire to the same length. Uh, I guess probably like this, right? Like that. We'll cut each wire to the same length. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the uh, connectors stripped and soldered on. And then note that there are five wires coming out of this thing. For the purposes of soldering the connector onto the end of these, it doesn't really matter what five wires these are. Because there's five, uh, I don't think I have a five pin connector. Uh, I think all we hit, we're going to end up having to use a six pin connector and if possible I'd like to use one of the black ones. Uh, I'll use a black one because this one may be visible from under the seat uh, if you look up under it so hopefully a white one. Uh, a white one would be more eye catching. A black one will be a little more subdued so we'll try and use a black one. Black six pin connector should do the trick. Um, I suppose we'll uh, keep the uh, female side for the wiring harness and we'll use the male side for the light. Now before we go and get the connector on there, like I said, I want to get one more uh, piece of heat shrink tubing. So we bring it as close up to the connector as possible. Okay, so there's uh, two pieces of heat shrink tubing there. Uh, we don't want to heat them up just yet. Uh, we'll want to slide them up as far up to the connector as possible before we shrink them. So let's go ahead and uh, find the joints we need to solder into this thing. So get five of those bad boys out. Uh, and then something else we're going to want to do uh, just before we put the connector on is uh, because of where this wire is going to be mounted, Right, we're going to basically zip tie it along the edge of the uh, subframe here. 
uh, it's pretty exposed so we're gonna put a, a little bit of extra protection on it uh, using one of these uh, nylon seats here um, so you know just cut yourself off a little bit from that remember to cauterize the ends so they don't fray and then we'll have a nice well protected cable coming up under the seat and then you can just kind of like snake that down so it's out of the way I think all that's left is really to uh, solder our connectors on and again it doesn't really matter what order we put them in you know we'll try and I guess keep the power on the ground together and then I think these are the turn signals and then this is the uh, actual stop wire but uh, it doesn't really matter and eventually you'll end up with that and once you have all five soldered in you can just plug them into your connector uh, you pick and choose which ones you want obviously um, I think I'll put red down here and of course you'll hear it click put the yellows on this side I guess make sure they seat all the way and I'll get the green right there leaving that top one there open and there's our final connector so now we can kind of push this uh, uh, heat shrink tubing up a little further try and get it as far up as possible same thing with the second one that we slid down there try and see if you can interlock them before you shrink them um, that way you don't create an opening in the middle after which uh, we can just back this thing back uh, and loosen it and then finally uh, a little bit of electrical tape around the end of the nylon on each end like that uh, will help prevent these things from fraying at all in the future and it will also keep the uh, nylon uh, the nylon seat in place. Wrap that real tightly and make sure that it's good. And there you have it. There's our full well protected wiring connector. Uh, it'll look good under the seat and it'll keep those wires from uh, having any problems. Um, we got this, uh, I'm really glad that we got the heat shrink tubing all the way up to the connector as far as we can and I'm glad that we can still identify what colors the wires are on the back side of the connector so even though there's a little bit of extra empty space there I think we'll be good um, it may be worth uh, it may be worth seeing if maybe we can test this light to make sure that this connection now works before we go much further with it um, let me see if I have some spare wire laying around that I can use for that. Yeah, uh, okay, so here's our ground, which will attach to the negative end of the battery. Here's our, uh, this would be main power, right? And I think this is the the green one, which is the brake light. Yep. Here's the brake light. And then the two yellow ones are turn signals. Right? Which looks like the right turn. And the very bottom one's gonna be the left turn. Cool. Okay, so confirmed that the connector works. 
Uh, the last piece of the puzzle that we're going to do here uh, to finalize this headlamp, or tail lamp, I mean, is uh, we're going to mask this up. And like I said uh, just a moment ago, we're going to paint all this black. So the gray here uh, will be black. And um, you'll see when we mount it back up again, but it's mostly because you can see this gray line uh, outside of the bracket. And I think it throws your eye off when you're looking at it. So I'd like to uh, make it black. So we're going to mask it up, paint it, and go from there. If you ever go to paint parts like this, obviously, you know, you want to make sure you tape it all up um, as best you can. Uh, but also, because of these plastic parts, I mean, they're, they're designed to not be painted. Or they're designed to look all, you know, as good. But, you know, just scuff it up with a little bit of sandpaper. I'm going to hit it with, uh, you know, this Rust-Oleum flat black. Uh, and then I'm also going to hit it with a... Um, a little bit of matte clear coat to make sure that it doesn't chip or anything like that. So, real simple, easy process. Uh, go to town. And there we go. Uh, we'll strip off the tape and then be ready to reinstall it. Very good. And now we have a light with a black background. Um, I think. Uh, be a lot better off for it it's a subtle subtle fix but now when you're looking at the edge you know you're not really gonna it's not gonna stick out nearly as much uh, so let's go ahead and uh, you know put the uh, uh, rubber cover over the breather valve there and we'll go ahead and reinstall it Make sure all four bolts are tight. Here's our our new nylon protected wire. We'll basically end up zip tying it along the frame, the subframe here, as you can see. And then, uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. You can see where I was telling telling you you could you could see the gray of the light because it's, it doesn't really fit flush. The bracket doesn't really fit flush right there. I guess I could have tried to make it a little better and fit that, but I failed. So, you know, did it the best we could. I think now the only real blemishes are the scuffs in the in the light that I made uh, while while originally fixing the bracket. And then I'm not really a big fan of how the tape looks, but you know, in terms of reducing vibration, uh, I think it's important to have there. Um, either way, uh, that's pretty much it for the light. Once we, uh, you know, install the seat, um, it's going to look more or less like that. I think that's, uh, accurate placement. Yeah. Right. So not too bad. I really like the look. I think uh, I think it's super cool. Yeah, looks great. I think uh, I think I'm gonna be really happy with that. Uh, maybe some you know black hardware, some black screws might look a little better uh, if I could find my hand or get my hands on those. Um, and then yeah, maybe if I ever if I ever rebuild this bracket, you know, I might uh, try to get a little little bit more on the lip here so it tucks itself under the seat a little better. Uh, and then yeah, fill out this part right here uh, so it sits a little more flush. But otherwise, uh, I'm super happy with that. I think uh, that adds a really really cool look to the bike. Um, it's probably the best I could have asked for. You know, definitely looks a lot better than the old CBR tail lamp. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so I think uh, I think that about wraps it up for episode thirty uh, for this tail lamp. Now that we have the, uh, the tail lamp installed that we want to use, 
Now it looks real sexy. Pretty happy with that. Uh, and we have the the wiring all made up from the tail lamp to the connector. So all we really have to do is plug it into our harness. Now we basically need to build the other side of that connector. So uh, I think we're gonna, now that we have all this stuff more or less in place, I think the next big steps for us in terms of wiring, we're gonna get it to where you can turn the key and the lights come on. So our next big steps are wiring up the tail lamp and the headlamp and getting the turn signals to work and that sort of stuff. So once we have all the lights ready, we'll start working on the gauge cluster uh, and all this stuff should start falling into place pretty quickly. So cool. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe, maybe check out my game Ethereal Legends on Steam and uh, stay tuned for the next one. See you then.